Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So, after spending like two weeks with the PS Portal and trying everything on it, including playing it on the go, here's everything good and bad about this new remote player accessory for your PlayStation 5. First, let's talk about the good. Now, since this PS Portal is designed incorporating the DualSense controller, this hands down has to be the best ergonomics of any handheld device that I've ever owned and tested. It really feels super comfy in hands and provides super satisfying experience whilst gaming without having any of those usual compromises that come with handheld gaming. The haptic feedback and adaptive triggers add that never before sensation to handheld gaming, making this feel as good as how it does when you use the DualSense controller on the PlayStation 5. The screen, despite not being OLED, is still amazing. Colors are very vibrant and viewing angles are amazing as well. The screen size is also just right, making this thing so much better than strapping your smartphone into a controller shell. The inbuilt speakers get loud enough so you can just rely on them and then game on. The battery life is surprisingly good as well. I managed to get over four and a half hours of gameplay with one full charge and my screen brightness cranked up all the way to the max. Connection wise, Initially, I was seeing a lag despite having 300 Mbps connection with nearly 230 Mbps of speeds in the room where my PlayStation is located, but a quick reset to my Wi-Fi router and everything became smooth. However, from my testing, you really need to have a strong Wi-Fi signal to get that smooth, non-interrupted gameplay. Sony recommends 15 Mbps, but I would say having about 50 Mbps is really good. Also make sure that you have a very strong signal in every room that you wish to play. If you don't have that, then you might have to use Wi-Fi repeaters to boost your Wi-Fi signal. Even your family jumping onto your Wi-Fi network and using it is going to affect your gameplay. So keep that into consideration as well before buying. And playing outside your home network, I tried both at workplace and also using my iPhone as the mobile hotspot. Now, away from home using our work Wi-Fi, it was pretty decent. But at work, we have very strong Wi-Fi connection with next generation Wi-Fi router. Still, I did notice a bit of lag few times. However, it was not as bad to ruin your gaming experience. Using my mobile hotspot, it took a bit of time to connect, but once connected, it was pretty decent. But you really need to have a very strong cellular signal, preferably 5G and also unlimited data package as yes, it will consume data if you're streaming high definition games like this. Now, let's get on to the bad. I'll still elaborate on the mobile gaming aspect of this portal. If you or your kids are planning to use this whilst you're on the go, then it's really not a good idea, especially here in the UK as the mobile signal will fluctuate so much that it really makes it unusable. And public Wi-Fi's, don't even try that. First, most of them have a login screen, which does not work on the portal. And if by some miracle you found one which doesn't have the login screen, you really need to have very strong Wi-Fi speeds to even get this to work. You can again connect your phone to the hotspot, do the login and then tether your phone to the portal. But guys, the public Wi-Fi needs to be very fast with not that much public using it as well. So you do get decent speeds so you can stream your PlayStation games onto this. Now, another bad for this device is that without a Wi-Fi connection, this thing is absolutely useless. There's really nothing you can do with it if your portal is not connected to your PlayStation 5 via Wi-Fi. It just becomes a glorious, super cool looking paperweight. And to carry this thing around is also a tale of caution. This exposed screen design means that there are more chances of you hitting it to an edge or a corner and cracking it. Also, this is so wide that the large exposed screen in middle makes it feel that you need to handle it with caution. At the moment, I'm unable to store this at any place and just leave it on top of a soft desk mat on my table. This thing definitely needs a carry case and a screen protector. Also an anti-glare or matte coated screen protector at that. As this screen is super glossy and if you play any game which is set in a dark setting during daytime, then the reflections are absolutely horrible and it'll ruin your experience. Also, absence of Bluetooth is an annoyance here as you cannot pair any of your existing Bluetooth headphones to it. You need to buy one of these two yet unreleased headphones from Sony if you want to have that wireless headphone experience. 
you do get a 3.5 mm headphone jack and you can use your wired headphones so you don't disturb people around you whilst you deal with monsters or smash the race course. Another slight annoyance, it's almost like the power and volume buttons are hidden. It's really tricky to get to them. Same is the case with the USB-C port and the 3.5 mm headphone jack as well. You need to nicely rest this on a cushion and then plug it in. Also guys, you know that the DualSense controller has a touchpad which obviously is absent on the portal. And Sony provided a touchscreen solution which shows two touchpads on either sides of your thumbs to counteract this. Now, these touchpads are usually used to bring up menus, which is fine, but if they add gameplay controls in certain games like this one, Astro's Playroom, where you have to use the touchpads to control the rolling ball, it is a bit tricky to use. And it certainly doesn't feel as comfy as the touchpad on the DualSense. So that pretty much sums up my experience. All in all, positive things really trump here as once I managed a strong connection due to my high-speed Wi-Fi, this thing worked like a charm. I mean, you're getting the comfort of playing full-fledged PlayStation 5 games on a handheld device nicely lying on your bed. And that really is a convenience not to be overlooked. However, that really is the biggest selling point of this portal, having a strong requirement of being able to play your PlayStation 5 games anywhere in the house. And that's it, there's pretty much nothing else this device can do on its own. An offline mode or slotting in an SD card to watch movies or browse the internet. These are basic things which any handheld devices nowadays can do. And all of that is absent here. Not sure why Sony went to lengths to make sure that you cannot control or do those things on the portal, which kind of limits the appeal. So yes, Go for this if you want to play your PlayStation 5 games at any place in your home. But do check the Wi-Fi strength in every room that you wish to play before ordering one. So those are my thoughts on the PlayStation Portal after using it for two weeks. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Do you have any queries? Do drop them in the comment section down below and I'll try to respond to all of them. And whilst you're there, if you're enjoying my content, a like to this video will be immensely helpful, guys. And please do consider subscribing so I can keep making these videos for you. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.